This episode of The Brain Scoop is brought to you by an obscenely generous contribution from Heather Shu. The Chicago Field Museum is one of the largest and most respected natural history museums in the world. Join me as we go behind the scenes. Dun, dun, dun. We live our lives in this building. Yeah. It's like a passion. You absolutely. Oh, it's, absolutely. We're not nine to five. Yeah. No, not at all. It's you work and live and breathe natural history in these kind of places. Exactly. So mm -hmm. what I thought we could do is just take a walk through the preparation process and um, and follow the path of a specimen from cleaning uh, to cataloging, and then we can go in the collection and really that, blow your that'd mind. That'd be great. I mean, because we've talked about a couple of these things on the brain scoop, but it's on such a smaller level. I mean, I do everything in one or two rooms. You know, we get we get the thing and it goes in a freezer and I prep it in the same room in the Beatles and, and then I catalog it and it all happens in one place. But this is literally football fields worth of space of collections. I have heard legendary things about your domestic colony. It smells wonderful. It smells like our lab on crack. It just smells so, oh my gosh. And it's seasonal, it, it, it changes. Oh, oh, is that a squirrel? It is a squirrel. Oh, lovely. And that's, that's a gorilla hand. I was gonna say, it looks like you have a human in here. You can see the different, Whoa. different sized larvae. Yeah. And that makes it really good so they can get into like the little spaces mm -hmm. and the big spaces. And the big black guys are the adults. They're so gross. I love this place. I love these guys. So do we. I mean, yeah, they do so much work. We this always joke like they're going to start, they're going to build a union or something. No, this is free labor. Them. No unions, no coffee breaks, no pay raises. We don't want to put anything in too fresh because if it is, if it's got a lot of moisture in it, then it runs the risk of creating mold in the colony, which yeah. is bad news for the larvae. Yeah. And so we put it out on the drying rack for at least two or three days. So really? So uh, it does dry a little bit, but as Anna says, if it's either freezer burned or uh, too dry, then we have to alter it slightly. That's fascinating. It's a squirrel that's been sitting out for two days. Two days, and it's essentially ready to go in when, yeah, uh, only when Anna sees uh, that the colony's hungry. And sometimes we get uh, little infestations of spiders. Oh, these are the Ooh. fattest, laziest spiders. Because can you imagine if you're like a spider and you're here in the corner, and when it's time for lunch, you just throw a thread down. Yeah. And just catch a larvae. Oh, amazing. Come on, grab it. Show it to Michael. Michael. Michael, check this out. <laughs> Michael, check it out. Wow. Are these like little keratin sheaths? Just like little horns? Like regular ungulate horn development? I think so. That's amazing. But look at the little bumps along the Wow, that is just amazing. The orbit there. We don't have any chameleons in our collection. Don't take that one. As Anna can show you, she opens that door, this uh, freezer then. Whoa. It's so well organized. We just have things in Ziploc bags we shove in the door. But I guess they, I, I, they just do such a wonderful job. Our beetles could uh, definitely take some pointers from your beetles. I don't even know. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Oh my God. You're just gonna just take it out of there. That is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Oh, come on, Emily. I, oh. Oh, come on. I mean, but like in a beautiful way. He's Thank gorgeous. You. Thank you. This is a hammerhead bat. This is the male. Yeah. And hammerhead bats have a bulbous nose and fleshy lips and a larynx that's so large it actually displaces the heart to the side of the thoracic cavity. What? And it's the shape of a tuba. You're and it, full I of it. I am not Yo. full of it. And uh, these animals lek. Oh. The definition of a lek is when individuals of one sex get together as a group to advertise to the opposite sex, like sage grouse. Okay. okay? So what these fruit bats do in Eastern and Central Africa is the males hang upside down in one tree, hundreds of them, flap their wings vigorously what? and honk. If oh, because nothing gets me going like a bunch of like honking males all soliciting it's just like, ladies. It's just like the bar on Friday what? night. What? Yeah. And uh, so they honk and the, and the nose amplifies the honk and the sound carries for miles and uh, you can, I can't. the females hear it and say, yo, the boys are back in town. And then they come <laughs> and choose a mate. And oh God. If what? you Google hammerhead bat, there's an NPR <laughs> piece where there was uh, a fellow that you can hear them uh, honking. It sounds like the cross between a wauga horn and a, and somebody banging on a, a steel radiator with a pipe. Yo, yo, yo. And they start really slow, right? Just like Friday night, five o'clock. Yeah. No, no, no. But then they, when the females start flying around, they get all worked up. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh. I've, I've never seen anything like this in my life. 
That's and this is 70% ethanol. This is potable ethanol. That okay. we, we get our ethanol from, we have to get a federal per permit to get our ethanol because we don't want denatured alcohol because they use benzene and other chemicals. Yeah. And we don't, our, our job here is to make sure this specimen it looks just like this 500 years from now, so that when mm -hmm. you and I are dust in the wind, there are still people testing hypotheses with these specimens. So everything we do is geared towards keeping this collection intact forever. It still has brains on it.